Hello everyone, this is Tim, and this is a little impromptu video I'm going to film here. I'm in my local area in southwestern Pennsylvania. We've had a ton of rain due to the remnants of, I believe, a tropical storm or a hurricane. I haven't really been keeping up on all the <laughs> latest and greatest news since I've been working so much. But um, I had a little bit of time today, so I figured I'd film a quick video. Um, but one thing about floods um, that I may wanted to mention real quick is that... Uh, Normal everyday places that you're north, you're used to going to, uh, roads that you're used to using, these all go away. You know, uh, it took me two and a half hours to find a meandering path on you know higher roads today to get home from one of the job sites I was working at, which normally takes about a half an hour. So you know, two plus extra hours of, tr of travel time. And if we're in like a fantasy game. You know, and there's a lot of rain, a lot of flooding. That's going to, I think, exponentially increase travel time. So maybe just something to, to think about real quick. Another thing I was thinking, too, is that, uh, you know, with a flood, uh, with other natural disasters, that, uh, you know, animals get dis displaced. And in, like, a fantasy game, there's also, you know, magical animals that maybe get displaced or perhaps use their abilities to protect the local environment that they're in really as a means of self-sustaining themselves. And I guess that kind of made me think of like the last unicorn where the, the, the main unicorn or whatever protects the forest that she's at. But it doesn't have, just have to be unicorns. It can be, you know, uh, you know, magical creatures that want to eat the other creatures, you know, predators that want to keep things, you know, going along the, the, the typical status quo so they have something to eat in the next few weeks. So, you know, maybe these creatures, you know, are protecting their own domain. They have some sort of, uh, you know, interest in self-sustaining uh, the local area. So, yeah, just a few thoughts. Nothing really big and major. Uh, I mean, I just wanted to say hi, get something back out there. I've been trying to film more. Uh, and I noticed I don't have a lot of ideas for gaming at the moment because I'm really not doing a ton. I'm still running some play-by-post games. Um, I guess I could talk a little bit about that. In my Empire of the Petal Throne game, uh, the I have two main characters. They, there's some NPCs that the players are going to start taking care of, you know, just so I don't have to run them. And they're traveling from, um, let's see here, Polyjakala, which is a smaller ancient city in the Soyolanyu uh, Empire. Uh, apologies for the pronunciation. And they decided to leave the city, which is always funny to me, because whenever I, I make these city campaigns... It, usually about six to ten sessions later that the players want to leave. So, you know, I just have bad luck when it comes to city campaigns. So a lot of the plot hooks and stuff and uh, NPCs and things that I had all set up, they, yeah, they just didn't, didn't happen anymore. Uh, you know, kind of just left in the dust. I could probably reuse some of those in uh, Urmish. That's the next uh, city they're working towards. And they're traveling along, uh, you know, these uh, kind of like the Wall of China uh, roads. And what was I going to say? <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Um, but oh, anyway, they bumped into a bunch of priests dedicated to uh, a god of stability, Thumas. And in the campaign itself, I get this idea from the, the wars setting from Decipher and Manga's publishing. But a new celestial body has entered, uh, you know, the, the heavens around Tecumel. And... Uh, there's lots of prophecies about this, bad omens, you know. Um, so anyway, there, there's these bunch of Thumas priests, and they're traveling along with uh, uh, devotee of Chiteng, which is a the, the uh, it's a it's a chaotic lord, but she's gonna worship one of the uh, the aspects that's a little bit uh, unknown to a lot of other ones, uh, Tlarnash, and so she's kind of spreading the the word of him. So we have these, you know, lawful uh, priest stability is the alignment with Tecumel. And, you know, these chaotic, uh, this chaotic priest and a fighter character that's kind of like her bodyguard. And they have a kind of interesting dynamic. But anyway, they're traveling with these priests, and they overhear and learn that inside the body of these priests are ancient artifacts that are supposed to be able to kill really powerful extraplanar beings that will be coming with that... That uh, new celestial body. That, that's that's sort of like the portent of them invading, and they're trying to seek out the the mad scribblings of this guy that everyone didn't think was uh, you know 
didn't think had any legitimacy. And uh, so, they, so basically, at the point in the game right now, they've already butchered one of the priests and ripped out the the uh, the uh, magical artifact that was buried inside of him, like surgically implanted. Um, and now, pretty much the uh, the characters are going to be butchering the priests of Thumis to dig out the artifacts out of their, their innards. And one of the priests has decided to side with them to turn his back on his fellow priests. Uh, mainly due to the fact that, I guess the players don't know this, that uh, he was mistreated by them. He's very low ranking, so he wasn't really taken um, seriously. So that's going on. Um, I played in a rock and roll um, like band in like the 60s, play by post, which was actually a lot of fun. There was um, sort of like some supernatural heaven and hell kind of stuff going on. And right now we're doing this like battle of the bands with like angels and devils or judging our performances and you know the fate of our souls rests on the line. So that's kind of like a climactic end of that campaign. I tried playing a Rollmaster Classic RMC game, and I don't know if the GM and my playing style meshed at all. I was in that campaign for I think uh, maybe two pages of text, and my character's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. I no, I was kind of being chaotic, so I can't really blame him. It's just there was no rules involved, which is a little weird. But I guess from his point of view, gods were involved, and I offered a sacrifice. And, yeah, it just got a little haywire there. Uh, let me think here. Is there anything else going on? I'm running a Hunter the Reckoning play-by-post game that uh, mainly has two characters right now. And they, after, like, a bunch of pages of, of text, they're finally getting together and talking to one another. Um, that kind of felt a little forced on my part, like out of character. I'm like, all right, guys, I've been trying to give you guys ins to talk to each other, but I don't want to like be too forceful. But at this point, I think you guys just need to work it out and make up your own minds as far as how you know the other character. You know, so I don't know. That's just some stuff that's going on. Hopefully, it's a little interesting. All right, everybody, I'll talk to you later. Uh, I've got to get to work, so uh, hopefully, there's no flooded roads between here and there. All right, talk to you guys later. I'm out.